In this example, we'll take a look how uh, the advection can be modified using the per step magma. Let's create a teapot for the emitter and a wind with strength of 0.2 and lots of turbulence with frequency of 0.01 and scale of 0.05 and then we'll create a stock particle simulator and we'll take a look at the results. We get particles that are emitted from the teapot and are being blown by the wind. Now let's uh, create a geosphere which we'll use for our in-volume test using magma. We'll place it somewhere on the right side of the simulation. We'll keyframe its position so it passes through the point cloud. And we might want to adjust the radius a little bit so it's a little bit bigger and we'll move it a little bit higher. Now we need to set up in the stock particle simulator uh, output channel which will be the advection offset this is the vector that will be used to move the particle on the current uh, step to the next frame and then we'll set uh, the input channel to the same value and we'll multiply this one using a switch where we'll be using a different floating point value 0.2 when the test is true and one when the test is false. We'll connect the two and we'll use for the test an object in volume operator which will have a geometry input. We'll pick the geosphere for that. We'll connect the in volume to the boolean input of the switch and now we can pick the input geometry to be the geosphere that we created in the scene. We'll be sampling the position in world space Everything in the particle simulator is in world space anyway, so no conversion is necessary. And if we simulate now, the particles entering the geosphere will be moving five times slower because we're multiplying by 0 0.2. Once they exit, they go back to normal speed. But if we take a look at the velocity, so we can change the display to show the lines, we'll see that the slowly moving particles are still having the same velocity as before. We'll have to explicitly also scale the velocity channel, so we set the velocity output, velocity input, and we'll multiply by the, exactly the same value, 0 0.2 when inside and 1.0 when outside. If we simulate now, then the velocities will be scaled the same way we scaled the advection offset. We could obviously uh, visualize the results even more by, uh, for example, setting the color of the particles based on the same rules. So it will be red color when inside and blue color when outside. We'll connect the in volume test to the operator. And now when the particles get in, they will become red and when they go out, we'll be back to blue. These colors are now available in the data in the stock simulator, but the color channel wasn't checked for savings, so it wasn't cached. We can use the menu of the per, uh, step magma to enable that channel. If we take a look at the data that was actually cached on this, the PATs, let's select back the stock simulator and disable its display. When we are looking only at the PRTs, we see that there is no color in the PRTs. It was simulated by the stock, but it wasn't saved to disk. Now that we have checked the color channel, if we re-simulate, the data will be written to disk and the PRT loader, which is currently being displayed together with the uh, stock will contain those colors. If we disable the stock display, we see that the PRT loader now contains the modified colors. Let's uh, delete this uh, PRT loader and just uh, run with the stock. Um, now that we have the color channel enabled, we can actually uh, make a history dependent uh, color simulation. When the particles have been born, if we don't override the color, 
based on the pastep magma with a blue color, but change this to an input channel and set the input channel to color. Then the color of the emitter, which in our case is a teapot, a green teapot, will be used on the particles. So if we simulate again, we'll get green particles being emitted, which enter the geosphere, become red. And when they come out, they will remain red because we modified the color channel and that sticks for the life. Of course, we can modify the color of the actual emitter. If we set the teapot to be blue, then our particles will become blue at the emission time, and then they will turn red, and they will remember this color. That means any red particle has been at some point inside the geosphere volume. As you can see, the per step magma gives us uh, a lot of flexibility to modify the velocity, the advection, of the particles and their color and pretty much any other channel.